Hello everybody, Cyanus111 here, and welcome back to more Not For Broadcast, The Disrupt Run. Let us continue on without any further delay. See you on the next day, everyone. Well, I'd rather let the anticipation build up for what's going to happen in this third and final episode for a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm not so sure what's going to happen to Chris or Susie, but it's probably not going to be good at all. The tension is just unbearable at this point. I'm supporting a massive rebel group, opposing Advance's agenda completely, and I think I'm going to be paying the price for letting Chris take my passport and letting Susie go on vacation. I'm pretty sure Alex Winston is not going to feel very good knowing that they have perished. I just, just fancy to know if there was a way I could have saved them other than not lending Chris my passport and not giving Susie the money to go traveling across the continent and whatnot. But I'll see you at the next day, everyone. Freaking. Finally. That took so long. I might as well have just grown a beard by this point and you would have had to call me an old man. I don't know how long this loading screen's been going for, but... It's 9.15 now and... And it's been running since before 8. I mean, before 9 o'clock. I know that much. Anyway... Day 371, a proportionate response. Actually, I am expecting these loading times to take way longer than they should because... Because this game, like I may or may have not have said, this game does have a lot of moving parts. And therefore, it's very hard for the technology that I have now to keep up with those moving parts at once. And like I have said before, I kind of doubt that that my computer is powerful enough to run both Not For Broadcast and any of the recording software I have currently at the same time. And it's apparently raining, but we can't see it for some reason, because the screen's black. Maybe I can see you when it properly loads up? Probably. I'm seriously thinking about hitting the stop button and waiting until, until the screen pops up. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go ahead and do it now. Okay. So here we are now. And goodness, is this going to be my last video of the session or what? After those long waiting times. Day 371, a proportionate response. The rest of your shift passes in a blur with the same words going around and around in your head. Operatives working for advanced detonated nuclear explosives. Initial estimates put the death toll into the millions. Uh, yeah, this really just did just happen. And... What of Susie and Chris? 
Thank you for letting me finally choose that answer. You pull into the driveway with no memory of the journey home. The light in the front room is on. Clearly someone else is still awake. That'd be Sam. The door creaks open into the living room, and you find Sam sitting on the tofa, sofa, staring at the TV. The screen is off, and they're clearly lost in thought. You take a seat beside them and put a reassuring hand on their shoulder. Okay, so this is where we can hear about Susie and Chris. Are they alright? If there exists a way to save Sam and Chris... No, 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 no. Susie and Chris. Can we do it? And what of these long loading times as well? Do you think there could be a way to fix that as well? Yeah, this is definitely going to be my last episode for the session. And I have a feeling that the next session isn't going to be that much better because the broadcasts are going to be way longer now. They don't look at you, but they do reach up to take your hand in theirs. And now you're closer. Or now that you're closer. You can see Sam's face more clearly. You see a look you've never seen before. Chris and Susie. They're both... They both were killed in the explosions. Were they? Oh, God. I know. What do we do? This is a nightmare for the both of us. What the hell can we do? The bastards killed Chris and Susie. And millions of others. All because of their effing war, which we never asked for. Where there should be tears, there is only fire. Pure, raw fury. They're manic now. I hate them, Alex. I know you've never been a fan of Advance, but after this, they're monsters. I need to know you understand that. <sighs> Sam, I understood that since the very beginning. That we can't just be indifferent. We need to actually do something. Oh, you bet your sweet ass nothing can justify what they did. And anyone who tries is just as bad as they are. Relief spreads over Sam's face like a wave and they collapse against you, clutching tightly. Clearly this was weighing heavily on them. You're not sure you've even processed it at all fully yet. But at least you'll get through it together. Uh, I don't know. <sighs> Things are going to be looking very shaky for advance soon. And I'm going to make sure of it. I'm going to be the hero who lets Disrupt get what they want. The end of Advance. Day 380, a final farewell. So I'm going to assume that this is the funeral that's going to take place for both Chris and Susie. So there's essentially nothing that I can do to save Chris or Susie at all. Just watch their funerals, probably at the same time. If the screen will come up soon, that is. And there it finally is. 
Day 380, a final farewell. The last week has passed in a blur. A rush of things to do, but all immediately forgotten. Your memory clouded by a dark fog. Nine days since the so-called Liberation Night and the beginning of Advance's new future. You weren't the first ones at the church today. You were staggered by the number of people who have come to mourn with you. Everyone here is for the same reason, sharing the same pain, the same sense of loss. It's written all over their faces, much as it would be on yours. Step away from everyone else needing space to gather your thoughts. Your little girl, Susie, and Chris too. Both just gone. Sam has said little since that evening, clearly still in shock. Not that you could blame them, you haven't been much better. Sam appears, silent, and squeezes your hand, tightly. An act of desperation seeking comfort, and you squeeze back. Some small piece of you can't help but wonder, are you partly to blame? These scars will not fade quickly. There hadn't even been coffins to bury. Oh gosh, I feel so awful allowing Chris and Susie to leave the territories. And little did I know that Advance would use these nuclear weapons. Of course, the Alex in the Advance run would know of such things. That Advance would be good. But here? There is no such thing as a good Advance. And from there, we're moving on today... Seven thirteen. An academic exodus. It's a seemingly ordinary morning, but as you get into work, you find a small crowd gathered in the break room. When you go in to grab your first cup of tea for the day, you can't help but overhear some excited chatter. You didn't hear? Yeah, another one's gone missing. What's that bring the total up to now? Oh, I should think over a hundred at this point. They won't all have been reported or noticed yet. Sorry, what's going on? An excited young woman turns to you and begins to explain. Another professor went missing from Queensview University. With all the other disappearances over the last year, scientists, doctors, researchers. She pauses before lowering her voice to a whisper. It's clearly disrupt targeting the people speaking out against them. I even heard Advancer struggling to prevent further. A deep familiar voice from behind you interrupts. What exactly is going on here? A silence overtakes the room as you all turn in unison towards the doorway. Bozeman clears his voice before continuing. I've told you before, I don't want to hear about these so-called disappearances. Come on now, people. Advance have been very clear that there's nothing to worry about. Which means they're not our problem. And unless they start classing cappuccinos as intellectual, I don't think anyone here has anything to worry about. Best get back to work. Bozeman holds up a hand to keep me as everyone else files out of the room. Look, I know you have a habit of doing what you want, but things are different now. Advance runs the show, and they've made their feelings clear. So now I'm doing the same. Channels one, Channel 1's official position is that the government has things well in hand. Nothing more, nothing less. I trust I won't be hearing talk about this again. He gives you a curt nod before leaving. It seems that, for better or for worse, public ownership is now in full swing. 
So this is where Channel 1 gets taken into public ownership by advance. This can't be good. Day 872. A spark to light the flames. You're surprised to find Sam in the bed next to you when you wake up. They must have got in very late last night from drinks with the folks from school. You decide to let Sam, you decide to let them sleep in and enjoy a lazy Sunday morning. With the house quiet, you decide to bring some breakfast into the living room to watch some TV while you eat. This is breaking news. Reports are coming in from across the country that large swaths of farmland went up in flames last night as part of what authorities are calling a heinous and well-planned act of terrorism by the group known as Disrupt. You drop your spoon back into the porch and turn up the volume. In addition to food stores, which government sources have said will put a strain on universal menu centers worldwide, a number of CCO and civic buildings were targeted in last night's attack. According to Prime Minister Julia Salisbury, specific prisons and re-education and betterment facilities were raided, and a small selection of problematic and potentially dangerous individuals were forcibly extracted from this from lawful custody. Did anyone get hurt? Unfortunately, it appears that the CCOs were ill-prepared for an event like this, and Disrupt seemed much more effective and well-organized in comparison. While most of the targeted decoration... Decorations. Take two. While most of the targeted locations were thankfully empty of people, given the lateness of the hour, the betterment centers were fully staffed when they came under attack. 17 CCOs and four administrative staff lost their lives as a result of the brutal actions of Disrupt last night. With countless more injured, many seriously, and rushed to the hospital. A few Disrupt members were captured during the conflicts, but the vast majority seemed to have ended, evaded capture so far. More on this story as it develops. Wow. But something catches your eye before you do. Footage at one of the crime scenes that's been looping around, the smoking shell of a CCO building. A very distinctive lighter Clearly from Urkistan. It's too small to make out clearly, but there's definitely an engraving on it. Oh, Chippy. What have you gotten us both into? Can this, I believe, should be another broadcast day? Ooh, Chippy's lighter. Achievement. Okay. Next broadcast day, I'll see when it starts. If it can start at all, that is. Okay, here we are. It's starting now. Day 912, The Uprising. What I remember it being called. Yep. A year and a half since Liberation Night. Mass and disrupt symbol. If only that mouse wasn't in the way, it would be more effective to show. Or whatever.
right? Laugh my butt. And I'm still expecting a lot of audio glitches here, just like what happened in the advance run. The night of fire was what happened on day something. Eight something. I just hope people don't unsubscribe because of my potato ass computer compared to what all the other not-for-broadcast YouTubers have been using. From what I remember... From what I recall, the headlines is the only time that Glitches these bad have happened. Food, glorious food. With the last of the menu okay, open, next headline has appeared. And 14 today, advance confirmed that the program is now in full operation, providing free food for every citizen of the new future. What started as rationing during the 20 week war has blossomed into a social contract that is the envy of the unawakened world. Oh man, I hope this doesn't make me late on the draw with selecting a headline. Oh god. Okay, well at least I was able to select a headline. Thank the lord for that. May have to turn up the live broadcast so I can hear what Megan is saying better. Yeah, like I said before, this game does have a lot of moving parts working at once, so my computer is clearly not ideal to be running a game like not for broadcasts since it has so many branching paths and lots of full motion video. Okay, I saw that I got some more audience in the ranks. Okay, well, it's stable again for now, at least. Here's Disrupt's headline. The organization's emblem appeared in every major city across the city across the territories last night in a well-coordinated publicity stunt, which has seen them dominate the headlines. Asked about the impressive display earlier today, Disrupt spokesperson Alan James said that the movement was reaching what he described as a critical mass. Poor choice of words, given recent history. And a few stories we've been following for a while reach their conclusions tonight. Swing low, sweet chariot. The national act of low-hanging testicular Ooh. has been finally traced back the to the world. Of Rimington's fist. What had at first seemed like a booming success for Sophia Rimington's pet project has ended uncomfortably for men throughout the territory. A slightly soupy Sophia, who resigned this morning, commented that the men should stop whinging before driving off so quickly that one photographer's foot and both of his nuts were run over in the kerfuffle. Ouch. Thank you. 
That really had to hurt for the reporter. Maybe they made those swords from stalactites and stalagmites. Oh, is that an eyeball? Oh, no. I'm pretty sure that beer is blood flavored. Let's hope only vampires will be able to drink it. And probably spit out the eyeball, too. Oh, dear. Today is the day we take back control. Soon it will be time for you to help us again. Come out of your houses. Block the traffic. Bring the capital to a standstill. I've met so many of you in my travels up and down territory once. You always ask the same question. How can I help? Well, this is how. And as for when, you'll know. Keep watching. You bet the viewers at home will keep watching. But first, 500 days after the loss of a fine leader and a great man and a great man, the staff of tonight's program is dedicated to remembering and celebrating the life of Peter Clement. Patrick Bannon is live from Parliament Park, where Julia Salisbury will be breaking ground on what will soon be a memorial garden in Peter's honor. Patrick. Listening to that old bitch lying through her tip about missing that poor bar. Patrick. I don't know what we're going to do. We're live. Because I'm not being funny. Things were better than Peter, weren't they? Patrick. They were, and I don't mind saying it. They were. Because Patrick. he held her back. But now, now there's no stopping Hello, her. Patrick. We're of course, live. Can't say that, can I can't say they're coming for us here. No, no, no. Not with public ownership. No, with public ownership, you can't say anything these days. Oh, indeed. Lost some signal there for a moment. Well, we will be going live to that groundbreaking ceremony as soon as we can get Patrick back. <laughs> Meanwhile, let me just say, I think the memorial gardens are going to be gorgeous. I've had a sneak peek. So I wasn't. I don't think I've been paying attention to that before, but I think the memorial gardens is what is what Advance has been working on on the 500 day anniversary of Peter Clement's death, rather than when they were elected. Apologies for the technical difficulties there, but any moment now, Julia Salisbury will step out on stage behind me. Alex, both of you, the boys in editing have just informed me that the eulogy footage isn't fully cut together yet. You're going to have to do it on the fly. For goodness sake, make sure you make it look good. ...gathering since this afternoon. This is Alan. I thought that the boy would leave and help us with hearts and minds. I will do that, Alan. I will not do that, Bozeman. Good evening, fellow teammates and friends. 500 days ago, all of our lives changed irrevocably. Still reeling from the triumphs and tribulations of Liberation Night, another great loss befell the people of these newly united territories. The loss of a leader. Dear friend and a hero, Peter Gordon Clement. Peter's death at the age of just 62, of course, announced by the team on the 24th of December. Just Christmas Eve. After Liberation Night. Born to a working class family on a housing estate in Rothering, Peter first trained as a carpenter before getting his start on television. First moving and building scenery, and then developing into the personality that we all knew and loved so much. Just the job first hit our screens over 25 years ago, running for 11 series, winning multiple awards, and charming audiences up and down the country. Peter taught 
caught them. All of them. Not to be content with the way things are. Not to accept inequity, no matter how small. But he also taught us what it took to fight them. Courage, integrity, empathy, and hard bloody grass. Spanning three decades, Peter Clement is known for shows including Wake Up, It's Saturday, and much later, late night chat show Cuckoo, which at its peak drew millions of viewers. Peter was by no means a saint. <laughs> Trust me, he once told me he had more regrets than he'd had stolen dinners. He always did have a knack for a turn of phrase. But it speaks to the strength of his character. He chose to share with us his mistakes alongside his achievements, his faults as well as his talents. Peter had the heart to give it all, all he had for the people of these United Territories. This is pretty disrespectful to the dead, but it's for Alan James and Disrupt. Ooh, pretty good sucker punch there. But his eyes still twinkled with that familiar joy for life, that spark of wit and wisdom of a life lived for others. Prime Minister Clement, of course, died from apparent liver failure after suffering from the long-term effects of alcohol abuse. I first met Peter nearly 20 years ago. Members before I was supposed to give a speech. Not unlike this one, actually. <laughs> Only I'd, um, I'd spilled coffee all down myself. And I was young, nervous, desperate to be liked. Then from behind me, I heard, Christ, Pat, you've either pissed your kex or sprung a leak, but either way, you've got a problem. <laughs> and before I could even say a word, he stripped off his dry trousers and insisted I took them. <laughs> that was the sort of man that Peter Clement was. Kind. Brilliant thinker, a natural leader, but mostly a good man. Well, judging by the footage I'm putting up, probably not that good. You're welcome, Alan.
Did I control the message okay, I hope? You've just seen them execute unarmed civilians. People like you and me. So why are you watching this? Why are you not in the streets with us tonight? What will it take for you to get up and be a part of this? March on team headquarters. Storm the building. Demand elections. Demand answers. Be what you're born to be. The once and future free. Go away. We'll be back. My pleasure, Alan. It's the final Eye of the Beholder ad. Even after Helena's death? Yep, Helena Canterbury Boatshu has died using Eye of the Beholder's product. Okay, so I gotta keep the fist on the air for at least five seconds. If I remember correctly, it's on camera four that the fist appears on. Yep, camera four. Have a real sense of responsibility now. Now, Get back to the interview, Alex. No. And that I should use that person for good. Okay, five seconds. I think that may have been more than five seconds given my audience's negative reaction to it. I very much doubt this is going to be an A plus sequence. Right, I better go off and get ready. That was Philippa Raiden sharing her thoughts about her lifestyle. 
staff. I think it's really important to stay grounded uh, and keep everything in perspective, clearly. Not everyone else agrees, but that's enough from me. Let's go now over to Dangly Park for the final ever episode of The Notice Board. The Notice Board is reaching its very end. Booze in a row. Indeed. audience.
Yes. But you managed to figure it all out from that. Well, I also uh, found this at the scene. <laughs> that proves nothing. No. Get him out of here, officer. You did it, Captain. You could say you ferreted him out. <laughs> And that does it for the notice board. This final ever episode of the notice board, and what a way to end it. Thank you as always to Jeff, Philippa, and Tommy. After the break, we'll be both dancing and learning. So this should be the disrupt tape I put in. Who's there this time? Did I? That's Katie Brightman? I got a segment grade of E? I may have to view this tape on my own time to get the full picture. I acted selfishly. I was glad to see the rich punished. I didn't see how backwards advance were. I didn't understand that rather than tearing down the wealth creators, we should have been helping everyone else to take a seat at their table. Under advance, the country is poorer. It is poorer in ambition. It is poorer in aspiration. We are infantilized by advances naive policies. Policies born from absurd redistributive fantasies. I have hauled myself out to the media to defend the indefensible. I have betrayed my parents. I see that now. Mum? Dad? I'm sorry. Our only hope, the only hope, now lies with Disrupt. More specifically, oh, with me. Katie Brightman. Welcome back to the National Nightly News. Later in this segment, we're hoping to be able to go back to Patrick Bannon at the scene of tonight's shocking Disrupt attack. But first, I'm delighted to be Okay, so we'll be getting back to the disrupt attack very soon after this performance. 
just like in the advance run. It's home. Nobody wants twins. Amazing. The Novaries there, treating us to their opening number. At least I don't think so. For a childless life, which is currently the hottest ticket in the Capital Theatre District. And we'll be touring the territories later this year. Right then, someone you got? Come on down. Let's go. Let me show. Hello. Hi, Megan. Hi. It's an honour to be here. Oh, really? Are you fans of the 
Capital, yes. I'm guessing that woman at the very back is with Disrupt. Imagine that. We just want people to 
people to have the option of a happy, child-free life without stigma. You know, when I was 14, before I had come out... <laughs> Next, external Patrick Bannon. Or not Patrick, as the wiki calls it. Or should I say her? She's still here. I think there were people that needed help. Any team player would have done the same. I don't deserve praise for being human. Yes, no accolades here. Or palaces. Right. Or lemonade. Nope. Right. So, is the situation now? Are we safe? Uh, yes. Uh, the security services performed their duties without hesitation. And I would like to assure the public that although there have been some injuries, there were no civilian deaths here this evening. Well, that's good news about Okay. You. Sorry, did you, did you say no death? That's no right. deaths? No civilian deaths. Just the four disrupt terrorists curtailed by law enforcement who were... As oh, I feel some shaking so here. In game. If I may, I have a message for your viewers. Oh, of course, the camera says... Speak I'll get down. ready to censor in case any orange comes up. I can hear some gunfire from outside of the studio. Oh. Interference was off for a moment there. It's a war zone out here. Yeah. Oh, the broadcast tower's coming down. Oh, might this be the end of Channel 1? This chaos. This is Ooh. and I got the low battery warning which I'm going to dismiss for right now, obviously. And I think that is going to be the end of this session anyway.
sequence A, sequence E, sequence A, plus achievement unlocked. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. I've received my full wages. Current wealth can't afford coffee. That remains unchanged. I know I played the Neil's Deals advert here, but, cha but chairs didn't change any. Advance down, disrupt up, and oh! Channel one does not love us. <sighs> All I can say is, I'm so happy I got through this session because it was essentially hell trying to get this broadcast to load. But thank goodness there are only two of them left that I have to do to get the next ending. Um, so with Jeremy and Alan, maybe I can get to it, get to what I want. The inevitable fall of advance, as Alan James once said. And that tape with Katie Brightman? Little did I know she would eventually become part of Disrupt, of all people. She initially opposed Alan James in Day 8. Um, the, 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 the. I forgot what the name of the broadcast was, but it's still very shocking to see Katie Brightman finally side with Disrupt. I suppose we'll get to find out a little bit more about... about what's going to happen to Channel 1 now that Disrupt has possibly taken over. But I'm going to go ahead and get all these videos edited for now. So, until then, thank you all so much for watching. And I will see you next time. Bye!